my channel it's Christabel here today we're watching Better Call Saul season 2 episode 7 um, we left it where Jimmy and Kim were kind of like on the outs she was pissed at him because he would got her in the shit um, and basically she was pissed at him but she was still listening to him singing on answer machine messages and all that sort of soft stuff so yeah she's got a soft spot for him um, and then she had a meeting with the client she brought into the firm with Howard and Howard, Howard was like cold as ice so yeah we're seeing if she's going to stay in the company or she's going to move on because she had a court appearance for the um, Sam Piper case and she was strong in there even though she lost the motion she had a good argument and the, the boss on the opposing side for one can tell that Jimmy not Jimmy that Howard is not there to support her and two was quite impressed with her prowess in the courtroom but I also think three it would probably be disruptive to take her from the firm because then it just means they've got one good lawyer less so it, it would be a good coup on his part um, Mike tried to resist taking the gun charges by pushing back on all the guys that were coming around his house and shit touching them up a bit but it got sinister when those two t motherfuckers we say twins but they're not twins um when they turned up at his daughter and granddaughter's hotel where they're staying and just was like yeah medea what now and so yeah that was just like sinister as fuck as we know what they're capable of so mike went in to see um hector and is gonna take the charge Hector was like yeah you're taking the charge and there's no money involved and he was like nah I'm gonna have to take that money off your hands cuz I need some cash and then he gave half of it back to bloody Nacho if not all of it was it half of it he gave Nacho back the 25 grand that he freaking paid to get the job done in the first place and it's just like I know it wasn't going to be what you said you were going to provide, but you still provided the service, so it should have at least been half price. But yeah, that would bug me big time. I'm like, no, no, we're not giving back the, the money. So yeah, that was episode six. This is seven. Let's go. I drove into town, walked into Madison, had the last nickel in my pocket, and then my car died. Oh, God. That's, that's just... Uh, <laughs> I know. Now I've convince myself that Freddy's gonna have another seizure before I get back from medicine. So, if you can help me, I would be so grateful. If you could possibly just spare five dollars instead, I'd rather grab a cab than take a chance with my old clunker. Yeah, five dollars. If you can spare it. If you, this is how you learn the tricks yeah, of the trade, sure. yeah? It's a ripoff, just like that bum from last week. Jimmy. Every grifter in town knows that this is the spot to come for an easy handout. Grifter? Where in the world did you learn that word? Dad, his story's baloney. He probably doesn't even have a son. He's conning you. Sorry to bother you folks. I I'm gonna get out of here. I'm, I'm gonna... No, 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 no. Dad. No, no bother. Come on, no. Here. There's ten dollars for you. Bruh. Car in the cools. Four bucks. Yeah, give me a card. Money first. Give me two cards. There are wolves and sheep in this world, kid. Wolves and sheep. Figure out which one you're gonna be. Is that when he starts taking out of the till? I, I found the. Uh... Did he leave? Oh dear. So it's like saying he learned nothing from his father. 
he thought his dad was a mug. And this guy that came in and showed him a skill, if you like, left more of an impact on him than his own puppy. I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I'll get right to it. Um, I regret to inform you that, with the benefit of hindsight, Mr. Airman Trout will be amending his original statement a tad. A tad? A wee bit. He's decided that he can no longer, in good conscience, claim that the gun found at the scene belonged to Tuco Salamanca. Was it your gun, Mr. Erman Trout? No, he's not saying that. Can we hear it from Mr. Erman Trout? The gun wasn't Salamanca's, that's all I can tell you. You told us it was. You said Salamanca pulled it and pointed it at you. Is it? He's not a forensics expert? Who knows, maybe it uh, fell from a passing bird's beak and Mr. Salamanca caught it and tried to throw it away. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Does Salamanca threaten you, Mr. Ermintron? All right, the gun was not Salamanca's. If you try to introduce it in evidence, Mr. Ermintron will make himself available to the defense and he will set the record straight, categorically and unequivocally. Hmm. Did he threaten you or pay? Don't claim the gun is yours. That's all I'm asking. Will they let you get away with just a half explanation, though? Hey, today, it's on me. No charge. You take the next one. And bill me. You talk too much. And bill me. In great. Hey, Jimmy. Did you tell Howard yet? I can't really talk right now. You didn't tell him. What's he offer, you think? I mean, brass tacks. Well, it's not going to be as close as your deal at Davidson, Maine, but they'll make me partner in two years, as opposed to somewhere between five years and never at HHM. Not too shabby. Dear Cliff, what do you think? Clifford or Cliff? I don't, uh, depends on what the letter is. That's fine. Treat yourself. It is with a heavy heart, okay? It is with a heavy heart that I tender my resignation to Davis and Maine. Tender is better than submit, yeah? Resignation? Yes, sir. Hey, it's so much to give up. I mean, the perks alone. Yeah, the apartment is, uh, yeah, <laughs> and the car. For the most part, the car is pretty sweet. And the bonus? Mm. The bonus is a done deal. They already cut me the check. I get to keep the bonus. Not if you quit. Before a certain term, I think yours is a year, you have to pay the money back. Jimmy, do you read your shit before you sign it? How would you not know that? It's, um... You want to hope your boy here keeps your little shit on the down low as well? Uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's right. Then I expect it here at Davis and Maine. And so just, just say, can you keep it on the D? Don't repeat what I said to anyone. Lord. I figured something had to be wrong. I mean, really. Oh, wrong. you bought that. Because you like it here, right? I love it. I love it. It Call it a momentary lapse of reason. And you can't write your own resignation letter anyway. Jesus. Jimmy McGill. Jimmy, this is Al Newman of Allied Funeral Homes. Great to meet you, Al. Nice time. Thanks. All right, let's get started, shall we? You're trying to force them to force him out so he doesn't lose the money. Hey, Doc, got a juicer for the office. Jimmy, it's very loud. Brian, come on in. We have clients out there. Sure you can. Two, coming right up. Sometimes it gets a little jammed. You just gotta force it. Yeah. Oh. Just do the years. It's treat you like a prison sentence. Do the bird. You're getting paid. 
someone is not flushing. Once is an accident, maybe even twice, three times, nah, that's a pattern. And we're not talking about a number one. Yes, thank you, Aaron. Now, I'm not here to shame anyone, nor to even want to know who did it, but... Uh, Cliff, it was me. Jimmy, I just said I didn't want to know. Hey, we need the water. Now, I read somewhere the Santa Fe watershed is down two full inches this year. Man's got the audacity, though, like, to just act this way. I would not have the gall to act this way, to be so disruptive in an office or workplace. Oh, Jimbo. What is that? Sounds like Ross playing Celebration. Jimmy, what's going on in there? Jimmy blowing off steam. Yeah, yeah, like you and your guitar, you know? Uh, I gotta say, you're right. I mean, it really helps with stress. You win. What do I win? You're fired. What? Cliff, if this is about the bagpipes... It's not about the bagpipes. Well, of course it's the bagpipes. It's the bagpipes and it's the not flushing in this, this optical migraine you call a business suit. Been brushing up in your contract law, haven't you? You want out of here, clearly. But you can't just up and quit and expect to keep your bonus. And if I fire you for cause, like I should have done for the TV commercial, again, no bonus. However, if I fire you not for cause, but for being an all-around jackass, yeah, hooray for you. Oh, Jimmy, just, uh, you're such a fucking hopeless case. Up. You're so comfortable First, with being a hopeless a favor, fucking like case. A for once. Tell me, how exactly did I mistreat you? What did I do to deserve this kind of behavior? We gave you opportunities, encouraged you to excel. We got you a car, an apartment. Hell, that Coco Bolo desk. Do you see a desk like that in here? You never gave this a chance. Why? Because mm. I'm a waste man by nature. I tried to make it work. Yeah, but really, what I, did, I did we do? Just why? A square peg. If you knew that, why did you take the job? Take your desk and get out. Hey, Cliff, for what it's worth, I think you're a good guy. Coming what from you? Worth, I think you're an asshole. It's not worth much, Jimmy. And the thing is, you're so law smart. You're so... You know your shit. But you don't put it to good. It's so frustrating to watch. It's open. Jimmy. Looking hey, dapper in a normal suit. Here? Does Howard know you're here? God, no. I snuck in. Well, uh, yeah, but make it quick. Schweikert and Coakley will pay your debt to HHM and make you a partner in two years, correct? Apparently. Don't try and make That's her a better deal. offer. Yes. Why? Would you entertain a better offer? From whom? HHM? From me. I'll make you partner tomorrow. Consider that proof of concept. Wexler McGill, partners at law. You and me. Hey, we're good together. You know that. So what's stopping us? Let's jump in with both feet. No, Be you're bad bosses, together. You're bad future. influence on each other. For one. How much collateral do you have to? Your name ain't shit. Said, so then there will be another Mesa Verde. That was all you, Kim. You did it once. You can do it again. In the back do you want to be a lover, worker, this can be a whole lot living? Of no, too it's too much eggs start. in the same bloody in basket. The end, we'll have a practice that is 100% ours. Well, you're right, it's a gamble. It's a big one. Yeah, but you're betting on yourself. And from where I sit, the odds are in your That's the best thing you've said yet. Yeah. She this is, is but you are life. not a good influence on her, Jimmy. You keep talking about me and Schweikart. What about you and Davis in Maine? It's over. I quit today. Technically, I got fired. If we're going to be law partners, I need to know one thing. What kind of lawyer are you going to be? I don't mean what kind of law are you going to practice. I mean, are you going to play it straight? Or are you going to be called? Slippy, slippy, slippy. I'm going to play it straight. There's no point in me doing this if I can't be myself. Every time I try to do things someone else's way, it blows up in my face. That's what happened at Davis. So you're going to be out dodge. I 
almost derailed your career. Pissed everyone. But you are going to derail her career if you take her along for the ride. Yeah. Colorful, I guess. Slippy. What do you say? Don't be a fool. I just... To knowingly. I don't see why it's so important to you that we work together. Hmm. I mean, we're already... Exactly. Why do you need me for this? I don't need you. I want you. You've got me. Just not as a law partner. That's right. Keep it separate. When your ship goes down, someone needs to be able to fucking float and get you back up. And look at that backyard. They're leaving the playhouse. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Kaylee will go crazy for that. Please. You don't worry about that. We'll make it happen, whatever the cost. Mike. Hey, I'm serious. Not another thought. If you want it, it's yours. Jimmy, yeah. you could have gone into a freaking car dealership and got a better car than that. You didn't have to come out with that yellow piece of crap. Can you believe? Sorry, I'm a slow. Hey, buddy. Oh, no. This is over and above. Really? How about a drink? I, I feel sorry for you. Come on, You're going to need on. some money in a few months. You're going to be on the... Cucumber water for the ropes? I'm totally sorry. On the ropes, mate. Hello. You've reached the law offices of James M. McGill, Esquire. Kindly leave. Be yourself. Be Jimmy. Hi, you've reached the law offices of Jimmy McGill. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. There you go. Are you pissed? Oh, you're not letting it go, Mike. You're like, you fucking came round my grand picnic, you mud. Is that where we at, Mike? Is that what you're saying? Enough about law, law, law. We know you're good. We know you know your stuff. Tell us about Kim Wexler. You started in the mailroom, is that right? I did. I was there almost, uh, well, ten years ago now. Pulled yourself up by your bootstraps. I like that. Uh, one day I just looked around at my life, at who I was, and realized if I kept going the way I was going. Which way was that? Best case? Probably married to the guy that ran the town gas station. <laughs> Maybe cashiering down at the Hinky Dinky. I just wanted something else. What did you want? More. More. Well, thanks for coming by. Always it feels safe to say that you can expect to hear from us by tomorrow at the latest. That's fantastic. I look forward to it. Perry? Pleasure, Kim. Howard? It's Rich, actually. Oh my god, I'm so no, sorry. No, no, no. I'm happy to be confused with Howard. He's a damn good looking man. Don't worry about it. When he's not being stone cold. Why this extra scene? Is someone gonna see you or s you gonna you gonna see someone? Oh. Do you wanna be a dodgy lawyer? Do you wanna join your lover to have some sort of pretend firm where you freaking scam mob? That's it. You could just be Wexler. Here to see Jimmy. He's in a meeting. A meeting? Have a seat. Reception. See, so you got your old car back. Yeah, the kidney people wouldn't take it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Wow, you finally got your Coco Bolo <laughs> desk. I'm not taking the job. Why not? You were right. Time for me to be my own boss. Solo practice. Not Wexler McGill, but Wexler and McGill. We find an office, share the housekeeping cost, the rent, electricity, everything. But I am Kim Wexler, attorney at law, and you are Jimmy McGill, attorney at law. Both free to practice as we see that's fit. good so then you could use each other's services Separate firms and you could still be oh like town, so under each other's ass you, you just want to be around her all the time 
and I do them mine. We'll have freedom, but we aren't each trying to go it alone. I don't know what to say. Move over on that desk, Jimmy. Okay, so that was a chill episode. It's given us more like... It's just shown us which direction Jimmy's going to go. Um, whoa, whoa. Jimmy, man. I'm a massive advocate for entrepreneurial drive, for working for yourself, backing yourself, and all of that good stuff. Jimmy, I'm not so freaking sure. Kim, yes, Jimmy. Mm, I don't know where this is going to go, but I've just got a feeling that one is going to drag down the other or get the other into some shit. And I'm not going to necessarily say it's Jimmy that's going to get Kim into it because Kim looks like she's just as, what's the word, mischievous when she wants to be. So, um, yeah, it's all a bit up in the air. I don't know where it's going. And what's Mike doing sitting outside Hector's, like, planning revenge and shit? I like that. I like that. Make it look like you're cooperating, you're going along in sneak attack. Woo! Oi, oi, oi! Yeah, but hey, I'm Shatteruni. So I'm going to end this video here. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do, give me a like, comment, subscribe. Come back for the next one, which shouldn't be so long now that the football is almost over. But yeah, peace and love. Bye.